Hi, I'm Anna, a woman who believed in the power of love and the dream of a happy family. But before I dive into my story, don't forget to like and subscribe for more tales of life's unpredictable journeys. I remember staring at the negative pregnancy test in the bathroom, feeling a familiar pang of disappointment. Just then, David walked in, his face a mask of concern. Another negative? I nodded silently. That's when the doorbell rang. David sighed and went to answer it. It was Margaret, his mother, her eyes scanning the room until they landed on me. Still no good news? I don't understand why you two can't manage to give me a grandchild. I felt a familiar flush of humiliation. David remained silent, offering me no support. Mother, please. No, David. She needs to hear this. Maybe it's time you considered other options. A wife should be able to give her husband a child. I turned away, biting back tears. David finally spoke up, but his words were not the comfort I hoped for. Mom has a point, Anna. Maybe we should start looking into fertility clinics or something. His words stung. I felt so alone, caught between a husband who wouldn't stand up for me and a mother-in-law who saw me as nothing more than a vessel for her grandchildren. The days that followed were filled with silent dinners and cold shoulders. One evening, while David was out, I decided to tidy his home office. That's when I found it. An envelope, slightly open, revealing a sonogram picture. My heart raced as I pulled it out. It was dated recently and signed, Can't wait to meet you, Daddy. Emily. I was still holding the sonogram when David walked in. His face drained of color the moment he saw what was in my hands. Anna, I... I can explain. Explain? Explain how you've been sleeping with your secretary? How she's pregnant with your child? He stammered. It's not what you think. I didn't mean for this to happen. How long, David? It was a mistake, Anna. Please, we can work through this. A mistake? Is that what our marriage is to you? A mistake? I was screaming now, tears streaming down my face. David reached out, but I slapped his hand away. You've made your choice, David. Now live with it. I stormed out of the room, leaving David standing there, his face a mix of guilt and regret. The next few days were a blur. I moved to the guest room, barely speaking to David. When I did, it was only to discuss the divorce he had initiated. He pleaded, said he made a mistake, but his words fell on deaf ears. I was hurt, angry, and above all, determined to move on. Sitting in my new empty apartment, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. The divorce papers sat on the table, a symbol of my new beginning. David's betrayal had shattered my world but I was ready to pick up the pieces and rebuild, stronger and more independent than ever. I knew the road ahead would be tough, but I was ready for the challenge. This was just the beginning of my journey, a journey of healing, discovery, and ultimately, triumph. And that's where my story begins. Stay tuned for what comes next, and remember to like and subscribe for more updates on my journey. I was knee-deep in packing my things from what used to be our home when I stumbled upon it a sealed envelope buried under piles of David's old work documents. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tore it open. Inside was a medical report, the words, irreversible infertility, glaring up at me. My heart sank. All this time, the problem wasn't me. I remembered the days when we were happy, or at least when I thought we were. David and I, hand in hand, dreaming of a future filled with the laughter of children. Those dreams now seem like cruel jokes. I was pulling out old photo albums from the shelf, lost in these memories, when my phone buzzed. It was Lucy, my childhood friend. Hey, Anna, how are you holding up? Not great, Lucy. I just found something. David's infertile. He's known all along. There was a sharp intake of breath on the other end. Anna, that's... that's huge. What are you going to do? I knew exactly what I had to do. I need to expose him, Lucy. I can't let him get away with this. A few days later, I was having coffee with Mrs. Peterson, the elderly neighbor who had always been like a second mother to me. Anna, dear, people like David never think they'll get caught, but they always do. But how? How do I bring the truth to light? Truth has a way of coming out, especially when given a little nudge. Her words stayed with me as I walked home, a plan forming in my mind. The next stop was Mr. Hamilton, the lawyer who had been recommended to me. His office was lined with books, and his demeanor was as sharp as his suit. So, 
You want to use this information in your divorce proceedings? It's more than that, Mr. Hamilton. I want everyone to know the truth. He's deceived everyone. Mr. Hamilton leaned back in his chair, studying me. It's risky, but if played right, it could work. Do you have any ideas? I do, I said, and for the first time in a long while, I felt a flicker of hope. Over the next few weeks, I put my plan into motion. I had meetings with Lucy, who helped me gather information. I spent evenings with Mrs. Peterson, who offered advice and a listening ear. And I had numerous discussions with Mr. Hamilton, fine-tuning the details. The day of reckoning was drawing near, and as it did, my resolve only strengthened. David had no idea what was coming for him. I knew there was no turning back now. The pieces were in place, and it was only a matter of time before the curtain was lifted, revealing the truth in all its harsh, unyielding light. The plan was set. I had sent out the invitations for what I called a peaceful closure dinner. Margaret, David, his friends, and even Emily were on the list. Everyone thought it was my way of moving on. Little did they know. Are you sure you're ready for this? Lucy asked as we finalized the details at her apartment. I've never been more sure of anything, I replied, a steely resolve in my voice. Mr. Hamilton had advised caution, but I knew the dramatic reveal was necessary. This wasn't just about legalities. It was about exposing a truth so long buried. The night of the dinner arrived. My hands trembled slightly as I prepared the dining room. Every place setting was perfect, every dish a reminder of past gatherings. But this night was different. As the guests arrived, the air was filled with an awkward politeness. Margaret gave me a tight-lipped smile. David looked uncomfortable. And Emily? She looked nervous. Dinner progressed with benign conversation until dessert, when I steered the topic to children. It's sad, really. Some couples try so hard and can't have kids, while others, well, they just get lucky without even trying, I said, locking eyes with Emily. Margaret chimed in. Yes, it's a true blessing to have children. David, you must be thrilled about Emily's pregnancy. The room grew tense. This was my moment. I guess it's easier for some than for others especially when you know the whole story. I stood up, my chair scraping against the floor, and reached into my purse. Pulling out the medical report, I continued. Like how David has known about his infertility for years. The room fell silent. Margaret's eyes widened in disbelief, while David's face turned pale. What is this nonsense, Anna? Margaret finally burst out. It's no nonsense, Margaret. This, I waved the report, is a medical report. David is infertile, He's known all along. David stood up. Anna, please, let's not do this here. Why, David? A shame that everyone will know the truth? That you blamed me for our childlessness when it was you all along? I turned to Emily. And you, expecting a child with a man who can't have children. How does that work? Emily's face crumpled, tears forming in her eyes. Margaret looked from David to Emily, then back to me, her expression one of shock and confusion. This is outrageous. David, tell her she's wrong, Margaret demanded. David just stood there, wordless, the truth written all over his face. As the guests started whispering among themselves, I knew my job was done. The truth was out, and the consequences were unfolding right before my eyes. I watched as Margaret confronted David, her voice a mix of anger and disbelief. Emily was sobbing quietly in a corner, and David? He looked like a man whose world had just crumbled. I left them to their drama, stepping out into the cool night air. I had done it. I had exposed David and his lies. The sense of triumph was overwhelming, but so was the realization that this was just the beginning. There was still a legal battle ahead, and I was ready to fight it. The fallout from the dinner was immediate and brutal. David and Emily became the talk of the town, their reputations tarnished by the scandal. But the most surprising turn of events was Margaret's change of heart. A few days after the dinner, she showed up at my door, a look of remorse on her face. Anna, I... I owe you an apology. I was so wrong about you. Her words were a cold comfort, but they were a start. It's not just about being wrong, Margaret. It's about the years of pain you contributed to. But thank you for the apology. As she left, I couldn't help but feel a small sense of vindication. Then there was David. He called me, voice desperate, begging for a chance to explain, to make things right. Anna, I'm so sorry. I'll do anything to fix this. 
I can offer you a generous settlement. I cut him off. It's not about the money, David. It's about honesty, something you clearly know nothing about. I hung up, knowing that our next encounter would be in court. Court day arrived, and I walked in with my head held high, Mr. Hamilton at my side. David was already there, looking deflated. As the proceedings began, it was clear that the odds were in my favor. The evidence was indisputable, and David's attempts to deny it were feeble at best. Mr. David, is it true that you were aware of your infertility before blaming your wife for your inability to conceive? The judge asked. David hesitated. Then, under the weight of the evidence, he admitted the truth. And is it also true that you engaged in an extramarital affair with your secretary, who is now pregnant? Again, a reluctant admission. The judge turned to me. Mrs. Anna, given the circumstances, I am inclined to grant you a favorable divorce settlement. I nodded, a sense of closure washing over me. Walking out of the courtroom, I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. The legal battle was over, and I had come out on top. But it was more than just winning the case. It was about reclaiming my life, my dignity. I had stood up to David and all that he represented, and I had won. I was no longer the woman who was defined by her marriage or her ability to conceive. I was Anna, strong, independent, and free to start anew. As I sat in my new apartment, a blank canvas waiting to be filled, I couldn't help but feel excited for the future. I had plans, dreams that had been put on hold. It was time to pursue them. I picked up a travel brochure, a smile spreading across my face. Maybe I'd start with a trip, somewhere far away, a place to find new adventures, new stories. My phone buzzed. It was Lucy. Hey, superstar, how does it feel to be a free woman? Like the beginning of something wonderful, I replied, my heart full of hope. And there I was, standing at the threshold of a new chapter in my life, ready to embrace whatever came next. The past had taught me hard lessons, but it had also shown me my strength. It was time to use that strength to build a life that was truly mine. So here's to new beginnings, to adventures, and to the unbreakable spirit of a woman who refused to be broken. And don't forget, like and subscribe for more stories of triumph, resilience, and the power of standing in your truth. Anna stood strong in the face of betrayal, turning her pain into power. But what do you think about her decision to publicly reveal David's secret during the dinner? Was it a necessary step towards justice? Or could there have been a more private way to handle the situation? Share your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this story of resilience and triumph, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep up with more captivating tales.